Some time ago, I began looking for a replacement for my Baco Laplander. I think I finally found one, the White Horse Noble. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. Okay, before anybody says it, no, this is not the real Baco Laplander. This is the one that was available to us here in Halifax through Mountain Equipment Co-op, known as the Baco Professional. But as far as I can tell, in every way, this is the same as the Baco Laplander, except the color. And I've been using this for, gosh, six, seven years. Actually, I quite like the orange color because I have a habit of laying things down sometimes instead of putting them back in my pocket, and the orange makes it a lot easier to pick up again. So, yeah, so it is a Baco. It's not the Laplander, but it is virtually the same saw. So, what's the backstory? Why did I feel I needed a replacement? Well, I am the coordinator for a group of hike leaders that are taking people out on guided hikes in the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes wilderness area and we were starting to outfit ourselves with gear and I wanted to put a couple of the Baco Laplanders in the leaders kits so they could have them for shelter building, fire building, whatever was necessary. But when I went to the Mountain Equipment we website I found that they no longer carried these. So I looked on Amazon. Well the price on Amazon had, well it was more than double what I paid for this one. So that's what sent me in search of a replacement. Now, where I found the replacement was also a local store known as Lee Valley. And I know maybe a lot of you, especially Canadians, would be familiar with Lee Valley. I'm not sure, but in the United States it is a Canadian store, but I'm sure you can ship it from Lee Valley if you're interested. And what I found is this saw. It is the White Horse Noble 180 millimeter folding saw. And I found this for half the price of what the Baco Laplander is selling for now. So I bought it about three months ago, and it's been my only carry in the woods now for the last three months. And uh, I think I'm ready to give you a review. So what I'd like to do is reposition the camera so that I can show you a comparison between this saw, the Baco, and my Silky Gomboy as well. Okay, so I have three saws laying out in front of me. I have the one that I'm reviewing right now, the White Horse Noble. I have the Silky Gomboy 240 and I have the venerable Baco Laplander. Yes, I know this is not the true Laplander, this is the Baco Professional. Now, what I want to do is just give you a few statistics on the White Horse and then we'll go to comparison the two. So, the White Horse saw is made in South Korea. It has an open length of 13 and a half inches or 394 millimeters. It has a closed length of 9.25 inches or 235 millimeters and the blade is 7 inches or 180 millimeters and it weighs in at 8.2 ounces or 234 grams and of course all the information I'm giving you will be put in the show notes below. The blade is a carbon steel that has been chrome plated. It's the teeth have been impulse hardened. The teeth are set at six teeth per inch with a tooth pitch of four millimeter. And if that sounds familiar, that's pretty much exactly the same type of a setup that's used by Silky. All right, right now this saw is selling at Lee Valley in Canada for $24.95 Canadian, which seems to be a very reasonable price, and I'll tell you the reason why. The competitor that I opened up showing you against it was this one, which of course is the Baco. The Baco right now is selling at $52.80 Canadian on Amazon. I can't buy it at Mountain Equipment Co-op anymore, so that's, that's the reason why, of course, I started looking for the replacement saw. In virtually every way, it is, or size-wise at least, it is identical to the White Horse saw. But there were a few differences. Let me go over what's similar and what's different. So to start with, both saws have plastic handles with rubber over molds. Both saws have a locking mechanism that locks it open and locks it shut. The pivot point on both saws can be operated with a couple of different screwdrivers to tighten it, and they do loosen over time. One of the things that is different between the two saws is the construction at this area, at the pivot point, and that is with the Baco, it is all plastic down inside. There is no recessed steel liner on that. However, with the White Horse, it is a steel liner inside this area of the saw that allows it, I think it, it stiffens it a little bit. And the reason I say that is I've done some comparison testing, and I will show you a little bit of comparison cutting in a minute. Um, where I have pressed harder on the saws than I normally would, and I found that there was less flex in the White Horse saw than there was in the Baco. 
So one other thing about the, or the white horse that I like over the Baco right now is the curved handle. This has more of a pistol grip handle, which sets my wrist at a more natural angle for cutting. All right, now let's me pick, let me pick up the Soki Gomboid. Now, this cannot be considered a comparison, true comparison against the White Horse because it's a different saw altogether. It's much longer, a different shape. The reason I wanted to show you the, the Soki Gomboid is the teeth on the saws. They are virtually identical and vert in every way. The tooth cut, the tooth pitch, the tooth rate is the same on both saws. Of course, the Gomboid is longer. One thing that the Gomboy has in terms of quality construction over the, over the White Horse is that it's a completely steel handle with a rubber overmold on top of it. The other thing that it has a little bit of an advantage of is it locks in the closed position, but it locks in the open position in two positions. So you can actually lock it with an upward angle to the blade for some different positions if you need to use that for cutting. Otherwise, it's not really a true comparison between the two of them. Let me close the Silky out of the way. So are there any other saws that I could have looked at on the market that would have been a closer comparison to this? Well, yes, Silky actually has one. Silky has one called the F180. It's, look, when you look at it, it's almost identical in just about every way to this one from Whitehorse. Right now, it's selling in Canada for $53.98, so literally more than twice the cost of this. Is it twice as good a uh, saw? Well, to be honest, I can't tell you but because I, I don't have one, but I know it's in one of the more bargain lines of Silky, so I suspect I don't see how it could be much better. If I can get my hands one at some point, I'll do a comparison between the two, but uh, I suspect that this saw works just as well as the Silky 180, and I know that may upset some people, but uh, uh, th that's my opinion at this point. Okay, so those are the three saws, and these are really the true competitors. So what I think I'll do now is reposition the camera. I have a piece of wood, and I'll do some comparison cutting tests. Okay, so what I'm cutting or using to as my test subject is a piece of pine branch that is well dead. It's only two inches in diameter, so this is not really a hard use test. This is just to show some comparison on the cutting and how quick it will go through a piece of wood. So let's see if I can position myself. So the first saw I'm going to use just as a standard is the Gomboy. Boy, the wind is really picking up here. Hopefully it's not interfering. And uh, let's just see. One. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the Gone Boy. The Gone Boy still cuts, even after all these years, and even though it's a little bit dull, it still cuts just nicely. Still a good saw. Let's use the Laplander. Cut off another piece. A little bit slower, but not by much. You know, it's still a, it's still a quite a good, quick saw. Uh, I haven't once I got the the Gomboy, I didn't use this one quite as much, so it probably remained a little sharper in comparison, simply because it hasn't been used as much. It's my smaller saw, that's more of a crafting saw than a firewood saw, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's still cut, maybe not quite as fast as the Gomboy. And of course, now the White Horse. Uh, in my opinion, that cut much more aggressively, much faster than did the Laplander. So, uh, yeah, I know it is brand new. Well, it's not brand new, it's three months old, so I guess it's got quite a bit of wear on it. Close to what the, the Baco has. Maybe a little rougher cutting on the edges of the wood, but uh, with those more aggressive teeth, that's to be expected. But uh, there you go. So that's just a, a, a little bit of a comparison, not a really hard use test, but a little bit of a comparison between the saws. Do you know, there's one other aspect of this saw that I didn't mention. It's, it's, it's not a primary use, but it's an interesting thing if you do find yourself in a position where you might need to use it. And that is, this has an amazing 90 degree spine on it. It's, you can actually feel a little bit of a burr on the edge of the blade. And uh, it works really well for striking a ferrocerium rod. I'm not going to test that now and show you, but it does work really well for that. So again, it would probably work really well for, I guess, peeling bark or scraping fat wood or making shavings on a dry wood for for lighting with the ferrocerium rod so that's a small plus now there is one negative that I've come across with this saw so far or two very small things but they're minor in the big picture one is 
in the closed position because of the curvature of the handle you can see that it is a wider saw top to bottom here and what that means is that the sheath that I had made for my Baco that won't work for this one I'm gonna to have to make a new sheath for it I know very small thing in the big picture the other one which is maybe a little bit of an annoyance I don't think it's a deal breaker is the lanyard hole I don't have a lanyard on this saw for a reason. There is a beautiful, generous lanyard hole right there, but the saw blade, just in the last little bit of closure, there's a little bit of play. And when it's out like that, no problem, right through, I don't know if you can see right through that uh, lanyard hole, but when the blade pushes in, it extends into the lanyard hole about a quarter of the way through. So my feeling is, is that if I put a piece of paracord in there, it's gonna catch on that over time and wear. Big deal? Certainly not. Right now, I don't even feel the need to put a piece of lanyard on this. It's not as if I put it on my wrist when I use it. Most of the time, I have that piece of lanyard on my tools just so in case I lay them down so I can find them in the duff on the forest floor. So I don't want you to misunderstand. It's not that I don't like the Baco Laplander any longer. In fact, it's still a wonderful saw. It is an easy use to saw and it's a highly effective saw. It is the going cost of the things that kind of made me start looking for a replacement. If I hadn't, if the prices had remained the same, there's a good chance that I would have just bought two of those for those hike leader kits. Having said that, now that I found this White Horse Noble, I'm glad that I have it. It is my preferred saw over the Baco. Again, you probably may still, or you may still like the Baco, and that's fine. I still like mine, but in my opinion, this is a better cutting, better performing saw. Okay, that's all I have to say about this saw. I will put all the information that I have available about where you can purchase it and all the description of it and the statistics in the show notes below. If you have any questions about this saw or if you know of other sources than the ones that I'm putting in the show notes where it can be purchased, please add those as well so other people can benefit from them. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.